Yes. Yes, it must be feedback because I'm sitting with headphones on my head. I, I, the only other time I use headphones is when I'm on a plane. What about when you mix your sick fat fat beats? Fat beats. Fat sick beats fat at your house. You're, you're on I the do. ones and you the do. twos. Yeah. No, I I mix fat batter. Oh. Fat batter. Oh. Batter. Oh. batter. And your batter. neighbor has a fat bat. <laughs> yeah. Because I saw him that one time outside fixing the sprinklers. Yeah, he yeah, should exactly. wear shirts. Exactly. Wear shirts. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we are close to the end of the gaming drought. Yeah. Not the uh, actual droughts that seem mm. to be happening all over the world. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Wow, comparing those two just makes it kind of hard to go on with the show. <laughs> I, I gotta say. Um, Let's go. Let's so with that, man. first Shut her down. Problems. We're out. Oh, God. Imam's going to punch me in the face. All right, Blair, I, I have to ask you something. Okay. Hi, Adam. We're going to be talking about Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Uh -huh. This is the new Counter-Strike. It was mm -hmm. just announced. Mm -hmm. I have an issue with the game. It has nothing to do with what most people have an issue about, which is usually like, oh, you're going to ruin my franchise that I love. Oh, how dare you put out Left 4 Dead 2 a year later. <laughs> no, this is a much bigger issue. The name of the game. Mm -hmm. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, a counter-strike does not mean you've gone on the offensive. You're actually reacting yes. in a counter mm. to someone else's strike. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, there seems to be a contradiction of terms in the name of this game. Hmm. Yeah. You're the most educated of the group, Stephen. What do yes. you think of that? Wait a um, I think that I don't think anything about it. I hadn't <laughs> thought about it till Adam mentioned it, but now that you pointed out, it's it's a it's a contradiction. It's it's a paradox, mm -hmm. and I think that they're trying to say something about the nature of war and conflict with the title. Either that or yeah. nobody nobody thought of it. They yeah. Just, oh, yeah, it's a cool yeah. sounding name. Yeah. I, I, I believe that was attempted with Kill Zone, and that's why everything was gray because it was unclear who was good, who was bad. Ooh, I like that. Everything's <laughs> or gray. maybe More we can't ambiguous. afford blue. <laughs> I think we're going to look out for, in keeping with the tradition of uh, this title, I think we can look forward to Kim Kardashian's new mobile game, Kim Kardashian's. My ass isn't fat. Because oh. <laughs> oh. it's because oh, it's really because she's Cause really, really cause she's got a fat ass. She even, <laughs> can you think of another fun game with a contradictory title? Peace Fighter. <laughs> it's a good one. The Only when you game. deliver it like that, though. <laughs> War Piecer. Uh, <laughs> Stealth Shooter. Rob, I I, th I think I have one that's already out. We play. Replay. Ooh. Because guess what? I never oh, did. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. All Take right. that, we play. Right. That's our bitter beginning to this week's feedback <laughs> for August 16th, 2011. If you couldn't figure out who was here, who well, that here? probably means you haven't watched the show much. Mm -hmm. um, Blair Herder. That's right. Uh, currently employed, soon to be fired as soon as Kim Kardashian finds out <laughs> that I just said that about her. Because rumor has it she watches feedback. It's her favorite show, oh, outside yeah. of eating. <laughs> the show of eating, yeah. she likes to act her ass is fat, you guys. Just bring Steven it back. Steven Johnson. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have something very important that I'd like to bring up. And it, oh, yes. It yes, involves yes. the feedback theme song. This has been an ongoing controversy. We brought it up last mm. week. It's Wait going on. Listen, as anyone who watches the show knows, I'm not allowed by management to sing the feedback theme song that is much beloved. So the, the commenters on the website left a lot of good comments that I wanted mm -hmm. to read this week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading this directly to management. Wicked Insane says, why the hell is Steve not allowed to sing the song anymore? Mm -hmm. What are the reasons? Mm -hmm. Did the management have gone crazy? And Ooh. yes, Wicked Insane, the management did have gone crazy. And I'm going to tell you now, in spite uh -huh. of the ban, uh -huh. I'm going to sing the song. You have nothing to lose but your Man, chains that's it. That's and it. your vocal you cords. You ready? All right, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. They can't stop my swag. No, they can't. Ooh. Or... All right, I, I, I was thinking that was quite moving. Was, it, it, made, it made me feel the show started. I, I got feel better. But thing that happened. Rob Manuel. Oh hey. Fresh from the fourth floor of this fine building. Fresh. I don't think fresh. anything's okay. fresh from that floor. <laughs> Spoiled from the fourth there floor you go. of this fine building. Yeah. There you Coming go. down to join us today. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, sure. No so, so let's start things off, Rob. Uh, Counter Strike Global, Global Offensive, Offensive was announced. Uh, just announced. Uh, they were announced not only for the PC but also for Xbox and for PS3. Uh, they say they want to make this as a part of the group of games, so it's not going to be like Counter-Strike 2. It's actually going to be uh, something a little bit different. Uh, some people have actually had their hands on this game. Uh, they've talked about how they're using some of the older maps, uh, bringing them up to date, using the engine that they have for Portal 2. 
Uh, so it looks like really clean, really fresh. Uh, so I mean, are, are we looking at sort of the graphics and obviously the physics that that the updated right. Source Engine can support? Exactly. Is anything else going to be coming with the game? Um, they've been talking about uh, new weapons, uh, mostly that they're going to add additional weapons. Like usually Counter Strike has had like a very small core group of weapons, and they want to bridge that out more uh, medium, sort of like they've had like close range weapons, they've had far range weapons, new and improved. Medium range weapons. Very important yes. when you're Medium launching range. an offensively sometimes, sometimes global Sometimes the guy is just strike. right over yes. there. Exactly. He's not right here. Uh, he's not out there. There's also talk of uh, something called a decoy grenade, where it actually makes the sound of gunfire wherever you throw it. Uh, okay. And so, like That's they are saying, cool. it's not going to full. Uh, it's not going to full like most players, but it's going to give them that like split second of like something else is going on around mm. them. Uh, there's also uh, talk about their sort of uh, buying system in which uh, the Kevlar vests are no longer, you don't have to buy those, but you have to buy like new items, new weapons. Uh, Molotov cocktails is one of the new, uh, one of the new weapons to slow people down, to actually cause like, uh, to cut off like even parts of the, of the map as you have like fire. Right, right. Running around the place. Um, Do do, do actual troops use Molotov cocktails? That would would be just kind of a a dire moment in conflict. (laughs) You're the most (laughs) awesome way to start a war of all time. Picture this, right? The battlefield. The fog of war slowly settling on the ground. One man walks out of the crowd with a bottle and a rag, stuffs it slowly, lights it, and throws it at his opponent, and that's when it hits the fan. See, I'm gonna see. I want a game called Moscow, 1916. You know, mm-hmm. we, we, we can do some you know, Russian Revolution sure. stuff. So, so Rob, Hidden Path Entertainment is working on this with Valve. Right. Who is Hidden Path? Uh, Hidden Path is they they're the ones actually ma- like doing most of the uh, like work for the game. Okay. So they're going to be actually Valve is sort of like giving the money, making sure everything's fine. But like they're the ones that are actually going in and sort of like updating everything. Okay, I, I, I think this is the part that, that I find somewhat fascinating, and, and you said it right at the top that this is not Counter Strike Two. No, this is mm-hmm. yet sort of another kind of revamp of Counter Strike, a game that has been with us two thousand. Around then, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, yeah. We're, I think we're over a decade with our time with, with the Counter Strike, which was absolutely huge back then. Um, but um, and, pri- and pretty much it, it, precipitated it's Battlefield, it's, Call of Duty, and everything. It else. is still very significant. There is still a large community, oh, oh, a yeah. very large community that is still playing, you know, Source and uh, oh, 1.6. No, no, it, it, it's, it's out there. there. They're, it's they're out there. They're still but very loyal. With, without doing that full sequel to really kind of bring everyone in, and you're doing kind of a revamp reboot. I mean, it it, it, it doesn't have the same kind of. It, it, it's an interesting move by Valve that I can't exactly understand where mm. the intention is going on this, that, you know, to suddenly get Counter-Strike back in the forefront without actually slapping a two and having a completely new, fresh game being put on it. Because it's weird. It's like they're trying to have their cake and eat it, too. Like, they know that people like Counter-Strike enough that they're still playing it after more than ten years. Yeah. So it's kind of like, why are they doing it at all? But, you I, know, it's, it's kind of oh, weird. Like, the whole thing is... And, and, and to be fair, half the reason I'm saying this is that if it had a two, one thing that Valve seems to cue to that was kind of an old-school tradition was that when you put a number or a new number next to a game, it meant there was a new revamped engine. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if they had a revamped engine... Half Life Three would feel like it was somewhere in the near future, right. <laughs> and that this feels like it's just really just telling me, well, just keep waiting, buddy. Uh, yeah, it's actually funny. Uh, when they did announce this, there were two Canadians actually having holding their own protest on the lawn of Valve <laughs> Studio. <laughs> two of them, <laughs> just two. Uh, asking for uh, Half Life Three to come out. Okay, so wow. It sounds like, oh, my God, it came all the way from Canada. Now, granted, they're, yes. they're, they're north of Seattle, yeah. right? Uh, Valve is. And, and, okay, these guys were, like, from Saskatchewan. Pretty much. They'd be like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. You, actually, you, you hoofed it over there. But yeah. Literally hoofed I it because they definitely they, rode they're on they're horses. They're probably from Victoria Island, and they were but tired of tea. I was emailing those guys back and forth earlier, actually, today. Uh-huh. Oh, really? And uh, they said that they were just bored one day. <laughs> which I thought was the greatest answer yeah. ever. Like how, like and they're the, the most of, polite protesters I've yeah, ever saying, spoken to. Let's go a. passively protest something that you know, really doesn't matter is, all that and much. And obviously, I, I completely understand the purpose of the slut walk that started in Toronto because of the comments of the police chief there. Right. But you know, with, with my stereotype I have of Canada, I was trying to figure. I mean, I don't know. It's it just it, if you did slut walk somewhere in the U.S., I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I understand. Right. But it, 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 like those two opposing forces, to make a valve reference, uh, actually, it's more of a gearbox yeah. reference. Let's let's. Let's do, give honest. credit where credit is sure. due. Uh, just, just seemed funny. And if I if I linger on that topic, we're we're just gonna get in trouble. <laughs> uh, so, from one of our readers, from Chuby, he says, "I wonder if PSN will get Steam access, like in Portal Two. Is there potential for cross-platform gameplay?" 
We don't know because they didn't announce it, and so we can only speculate, just like you can, Chuby. Uh, no, granted, there was that remarkable thing that that you know Gabe Newell announced at the well last year's E3 at the yeah, Sony right. press conference about the the bonding with Sony. I mean, mm. I, I I can see that happening there. I don't think Microsoft wants to give up sort of their their ownership over how they use Xbox Live, and that's why we haven't seen anything like that there. I agree. Uh, I mean, one would assume since they have found a way to make a lot of money on Steam that Sony would be interested in also making a lot of money in the same manner. So I, I think not this generation. Right. No. I, I would I would like to think that after two failed attempts, that Sony <laughs> like will like kind of look at multiplayer the right way for right. the you know PS4. I hope they come up with something Shouldn't more like I hope it's four like P H O R. That would be really mm. I hope it's the P91X. Yes. Oh. So, so it just gets that other group of people in that are really confused. <laughs> you know? Now I get one of them P91Xs. <laughs> yeah. You sure? What, do, what launch titles do you want? Uh, I'll take a protein shake. <laughs> and and uh, uh, some metrics, glutes. I guess. I don't know. Okay, so uh, obviously... Right work, my glutes. <laughs> once oh, again, glutes, the gaming community, and yes, I'm just going to say it, as it seems to be even more loud with the PC gaming community... When there is change, everything becomes like a damn knitting circle mm. with a bunch of geriatrics who are like, ah, they've changed my plans and my pills. What am I going to do? I can't read the writing on the bottle. I can't open it either. No difference is scary. Um, so, yes, people are now worried that they're going to dumb down the game. They're going to make it accessible to other people because that would just be a good business model. Um, what are viable ways that the game could be dumbed down? Blair, I'll start with you. You can put it on consoles. Because that's usually the best way to dumb something down is put on consoles. Uh, I mean, I don't. It's like dumb down is such a, a subjective term when oh, it comes oh, to video know, games, I right? Know. So I would say the best way to dumb it down would be to not sell it to Korean players first and let other people practice for a couple of months before the Koreans get their hands on it because they're going to be awesome. They're inherently awesome at this game, so that's a way to do it. That's racist. Um, no, the racist is what I was thinking, but non-racist is what I actually said. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I, I don't think they're... I mean, what Rob said, some of the new innovations, I think dumbing it down by giving medium-range weapons, right. maybe, you know, expanding the weapons loadout. Is that dumbing just, it down, or, no, no, no. Is that, or is that making it more diverse? Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, I don't agree the with question. the term dumbing down at all, and I should have qualified that at the beginning. Right. I think that you... It, dumbing it down is for... Dumb people. Dumb people Whoa. say dumbing it down. Dumbing down is kind of like... I'll, I'll use a non-gaming analogy. Like, the people that freaked out during the Lord of the Rings movies that they didn't keep the incredibly tedious Tom Bombadil sequence in the films. <laughs> like somehow that was like, well, right. no, they're just trying to make it more accessible and dumbing it down by not boring people to tears. Right. I wanted to hear every elf song. Every single <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Do you guys remember when Stephen King dumbed down the stand by releasing that dumbed down fifteen hundred page version instead yeah. of the eighteen hundred page awesome edition? Totally no. dumbed it down. God that book. Yes. I like things that are dumb. I'm really dumb. I don't care if they dumb things down. Whatever. Okay, but okay, keep playing as, on your PC. As, it's too dumb as for someone you, who likes you things that are dumb, yes. do you know they're dumb when you're liking them? Whoa. Me? I don't if have time to think about those things. In the forest, <laughs> I'm does too dumb to care? think about that. I'm too dumb to know. Is it a <laughs> fart forest? Rob, I mean... I, mean, I, I, I think that the deal, like a lot of people are going to be already speculating about the whole... Uh, buying the the economy of the game right which is one of the big things that people have been like well you can everyone can get kevlar vests oh, everyone can get kevlar vests uh, and because like, you're how, not earning it you're yeah. not really it's earning the same it. yeah it's the same thing came like up with diablo 3 and it's like with like everybody. trying to get headshots with everyone it gives everyone sort of like a fair opportunity it's like like people would have to like earn the kevlar vest you know sometimes sometimes you just have to trust the people that are good at what they're doing, and, and Valve are so good at what hey, they're thank doing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, I they know more true. than the. Believe it or not, they know more about making games than <laughs> what? people are message for. Yes. What? Just are saying. you kidding oh, me? You. It might seem thank crazy. There is a true. fifteen-year-old on the message board who wants to argue against that yeah. point. They just should have listened to it. They're incredibly yeah. spotty I think, I career think that, with their I, I, crappy games. I think people games. should should listen to Stephen Johnson and go read something like-minded, like T. S. Eliot. All right, moving on. Nintendo. There you go. Oh. Uh, so Nintendo patents a phrase. Actually, they patented two things. The first mm -hmm. one, which I don't want to get too much into because it was Wii 3D. And, you know, I don't know who else was going to try yeah. to get that patent. But, okay, so they might be a Almost little late to the party that really everyone seems to be clearing out of right now. Because right. there's probably like a dead body on the floor. 
don't know, maybe the heroin was poisoned. I don't know. Um, but they patents the phrase massively single player. Well, the now, idea. That's interesting. <laughs> that the is I- interesting. And not just the phrase, the idea of massively yeah. single okay, player. Let's, right. let's, let's figure out what the idea is, because I think many people were like me. I always feel that like an Elder Scrolls game pretty much is massively sure. single player, but they have a more complex idea for it. Right, and the idea is that a massively single player game is the, it's a single player game with effects in the world from other players that are playing their own single player games. But you never will see nor interact with their players, but it is still a dynamic, organic world that you're in that they're affecting. Right. The, the patent's kind of broad, so it also covers the idea that, hey, maybe there's a way you could invite people into your world so that they can affect it, and then you could interact with them. But, see, so the patent's very broad because it's just the idea of this, which has already been done, so it's kind of a funny thing yeah. to patent. I know. It, I mean, it's also it's it's broad enough that it's... It, that sounds like a tough one to lay claim to because yeah. I've had that idea. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and I would, I would imagine that someone somewhere, like maybe on the Bethesda team or doing similar yeah, games similar to right. that, had toyed with the idea, but for reasons that were probably quite well, valid. Nintendo's didn't explore it. very well known Animal Crossing it has elements of that very same thing. I guess thing. Yeah. massive was never a it's word. Just right. It's just weird. Except like, their heads. Their heads are massive. massive right. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like I could patent conversation, not talking. But conversation, because that's basically what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm patenting this conversation. Your individual topics, that is your deal. But I, I want mean, you to know it, you're going to owe it, me it, money because you're having a conversation. I actually put in a call to a friend of mine who does handle this type of law. Um, he might have been just too busy practicing law to get back to <laughs> no. me to give me his insight. But I hope to have something for, for, for someone I, it's, on that. It's, it's actually the, uh, they did a episode of This American Life. Mm-hmm. Where they do talk about, we are so th- highbrow. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, software law, and they, it's it's really just sort of this rampant, wild world of like you can patent just about anything you can think of. Twenty other people will probably have the exact same patent or something very similar yeah. to that patent, and so a lot of people or a lot of large companies will actually buy out or make patents on everything they can think of just to protect themselves from other people trying to sue them from the right. exact same patent. Wow. I mean, I, that, 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 that's why I'm attempting to patent feeling bad about myself mm. because <laughs> I'm just worried that some other people are going to try to encroach on that. Right. Um, there you go. I, I, I think the part that I like about this is, and granted, I, I think what Rob said is absolutely right. This is not, I don't think there's enough here to read that this is going to happen from no. Nintendo and maybe it'll just end up being Animal Crossing, but there's a moment where I went, Ooh, are they doing something new, complex, and consistent with a lot of the sophistication we're seeing in other game development out there? With Nintendo? No. <laughs> the answer is absolutely not. Probably no. not. I think it's safe to speculate no on It'd that. It'd be cool, though. I mean, I have one question about this whole thing. If there, if there is a huge game with this implemented in it, how will I grief people? Like, there has to be some well, sort of the mechanism. Same, it's, it's the there same has thing to be a wang that I can build or <laughs> right. some I mean, way the, I can destroy someone else's It's the same thing time. with Animal Crossing. I like, was going to say, can... after Animal Crossing DS, I think they're going to make sure there's no way. Yeah, to exactly. Sure you can How people. many <laughs> offensive uh, mail, uh, pieces of mail did you ship out? How many times did you go to someone else's... Uh, town and just chop down every single tree. Countless. <laughs> I burned them to I the ground. I cannot count the <laughs> the earth so nothing would grow there again. I took their women and children. Um, I just forgot. Dot Hack used to do this. Uh, That's true. I completely mm. for, I'm, I'm more accommodating. Like, I forgot Dot Hack exist. Did? I guess it still kind of exists as yeah. there is, it is a work it is, of art. It is, it is still we can out talk there. about in the present tense. Um, th- I mean, hopefully this, this could become more interesting. Has Nintendo said anything? No. No, I mean, yeah. Have, that, 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 not, not surprising. It's I very guess the timing, ephemeral. The timing of this patent application coming right after sort of daily contrition from Awada and everyone else over fair, at Nintendo acknowledging that they screwed up without right. having interesting games be, at the 3DS launch. To be fair, they, they filed the patent in 2010. Oh, they did. So it, it just, just came out now. now. It was just published now, apparently. Okay, well, maybe, so, maybe they're trying to push attention in that direction that right. they're doing something massively single-player-ish. <laughs> I think massively single players like want to get all my stuffed animals out and I sit with them. Oh, oh. That is such a dark view. I, the see, and I, on the other hand, I'm going to go John, home and masturbate to that. Stephen Johnson, welcome to feedback. 
Um, Wandry Canada said Doc Hack did this already. Hey, Can you yep. really put yeah, a copyright did. on something that's been done already? It isn't the name of your product. Uh, go check out this, uh, yeah, you know, uh, this episode of This American Life. I sounds mean, like. it sounds like a lot of, I mean, uh, sound, even they made it sound like there were just businesses built on the backs of people yeah. making these, these claims left and right. Uh, speaking of This mm. American Life, um, if you are a descendant of Philip Glass, do you have no choice but to end up like Ira Glass? I mean, is he just kind of preordained? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, just, yeah, yes. I just don't see a football player coming out of that family. Video no. games. Well, when, like you're, when, you're raised, when you're raised to be comfortable sitting at a desk outdoors, you can only do one thing with your life. Hey, when dad's like, hey, son, want to hear my uh, work in progress, Einstein on the beach? <laughs> we'll have fun. Whoa. I didn't know until this very moment that they were related. You didn't know that? Didn't know. Yeah, not, I don't believe it's his son. I believe it's cousin, nephew, something like that. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Ira Glass and Bill You've Glass. learned something. Stephen, I have a question for you. Yes! Uh -oh. What's going on with THQ? I'm going to tell you what's going on with Don't THQ. Yeah. Do it, Everybody Steven. ready? Here we go. So ready. I'm always pulling for THQ. Always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just always want them to do well. Sing it. And they have made... Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> they have made it very clear publicly that they are focusing on the hardcore and that their plan is to develop hardcore games for hardcore gamers. And I, I think I, that's I why what, I like what, you they're, know what? what they're trying to do. We don't do this on feedback, but I have a response to that. Go for it. Yay. What a nice ambition for a game company In to have. Fact, they yeah, said, it's nice. uh, specifically, what do they say? They, they're the atlas of companies that make money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, high five. That, that was... I didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> I did. didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> have four years of standing next to Adam. <laughs> you learn video games. Paid off. <laughs> I'm going to fire a writer for not writing. Make me say that. <laughs> ah, that's all I got, you guys. Thanks. I'm going to pull a Leah. So they had Catherine. What they have coming up is actually really cool. I mean, right now they're canceling game franchises like Red Faction and MX uh, versus ATV. And they're sort of Look, ruthlessly... ATV won. I'm yeah. just going to say it. Yeah. What? Okay. And what? What? I mean, yeah. <sighs> And they have cool stuff coming up um, announced with like Warhammer 40K, Space Marines, Metro Last Light, which should be pretty cool. Dark mm -hmm. Siders, too. I'm to that. Which mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to like. Mm -hmm. Saints Row the Third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the always reliable UFC WWE exactly. games. Those, right. Those, of course. Yeah, maybe they don't fit into this. Uh, I don't know how hardcore they're. Yeah, but you know what? It's always hardcore. good to have one thing yeah. that's reliable for your bottom oh, yeah. line. That's, that's how you can innovate and try right. things. I mean, look. Metro is, I mean, that, that was a critical success and yes. had sort of cult appreciation. Right. I was very impressed that THQ really wanted to step up and take mm -hmm. this interesting game concept out of Russia and really see if they could bring it to an American audience. But so. I, I'm feeling like, uh, like, the, like the way they acted toward the Red Faction franchise, that how quickly they canceled it, like this is it for Metro if it doesn't sell well when it comes out. You know, like they'll just be like, it's done. Well, no, but they tried done. for a while with Red Faction. I right. think yeah. in, in concept, it had a great idea. But the, mm -hmm. the, remember, the, the purpose of that franchise from the original one was the Geomod technology, right, which right. is now kind of dirty gur in any game where you're holding a gun. Right. So, I mean, it, 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 it never really carved out more of, of an identity past that. And I think that's what you saw suffering with the game in, in, mm -hmm. in the newer versions. But that's what's really exciting about THQ oh. is uh -oh. what they have really coming up here it comes. After this, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. blue sky speculative THQ uh -huh. lineup of like the creator of Assassin's Creed, I'm going to mispronounce the name, Patrice Desilet. Yes. Working on an unannounced game. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it is, but come on, man. It's that dude. Mm -hmm. He made yeah. Assassin's Creed. That's <laughs> that um, dude. Sequel to Homefront, which maybe I'm the only one who thinks is going to be awesome, but I think it's going to be awesome. Is it still the Koreans? I like the I, idea yes. that maybe it's like it's another country. Like now Cambodia. Like America's just getting its ass kicked <laughs> by exactly. just second rate just gangster empires. You might as well. Just bring them all in. I know Chile. the game's called Home Peru. Front, but I want it to take place in North Korea. How awesome would that be? Yeah. Well, the first mercenaries did. And... Yeah. But this is called Home Front. I, you know, kinda... It was kind of cool that they did put the first mercenaries in North Korea but because of the graphical fidelity available at the time. They can only have such a limited look that I think is probably like fairly consistent with what North Korea would look like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then we got Guillermo del Toro's games, the, the director of uh, Hellboy and uh, other Pan's Pan's Labyrinth, 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 Labyrinth yeah. Devil's Backbone, Chronos, Chronos. That's right. And remember, yep. Mimic. Everyone loves Ooh. Mimic. I kind of like Mimic. It was all right. <laughs> but anyway, he's working on a trilogy of games called Insane which he is described as Lovecraftian, and they're sort of sandbox, open-world Lovecraftian games. 
I'm so excited. I'm all, what did you do? What did you do? Exactly. Del Toro is also on, on, online to do the movie version of At the Mountains of Madness, yes. the great novel written by H.P. Lovecraft, mm -hmm. which if you haven't read, you should, because your vocabulary yeah, goes all, like that. All of H.P. Lovecraft <laughs> stories are free online. They are? Yes. yes. Okay, and also, uh, while well, you're out there, read The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. It's like yes. taking morphine without taking morphine. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to write that down. Yeah. Like <laughs> taking morphine. Um, no, those should be good. There, now, so. the one thing is, I noted there was an interview recently with Del Toro who said that, you know, he while he is an avid gamer himself, he has to, a lot to learn about the development mm -hmm. of video games. Right. And so we are not expecting to see these things. Sounds like two to three years, which would put it in right. the next generation of video games. That's my concern is right. I, hope, I hope they have their eye on um, of, of video game consoles. That you know that that, that that they're planning for that because there's sometimes a good game that gets lost because it's on the older system because during that transition period. Right. I think of that, and normally when when somebody says I don't really know much about video games, but I'm famous and I have money, so I'm going to make one. It ends up being the biggest pile of shit of all time. That's true. But uh, I have to say, um, he, he's working on this Strain trilogy right now. That's this a uh, series of books that he mm -hmm. pitched to HBO. Yeah. They were developing it. HBO canceled it, so he said oh, I'll just write a, the books. And he's writing with Chuck Hogan, who is kind of a crime fiction writer. Mm -hmm. And it's about like vampires. It's a, it's a re modern retelling of uh, the Dracula story. And um, you know, I gotta say, Del Toro's just kind of consulted on the story, but let Hogan, the writer, do yeah. the writing. And it's an amazing series of books. That the first two have come out. So if he lets whoever's making the game, THQ, whoever, whatever studio is actually working on it, do the game, and he just crafts the story, I have a lot of faith that this Del will actually Toro be pretty awesome. Del Toro is such oh, a yeah. nerd, and by nerd, I mean he understands. What makes loved things love? Yeah, <laughs> like he, like he, he is not like rumors of David O. Russell. You yeah. know, like going like I don't know why people like this Uncharted. <laughs> I'm gonna put a monkey in it. No, he like, like and, and, and like I like the Hellboy. You know, you yeah. know it, it, he was still clearly very respectful to sure. the source material and and and, and the tone. Del Toro is also though sort of uh, notorious for having a lot of projects that get talked about. Yeah, and don't get finished. Well, because so, everyone like, gets scared of him. Yeah, because you know what? Sure. I bet when he goes into a pitch meeting, he acts like it's, us. <laughs> and that's why we don't make movies. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we should. Um, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, do you, do you guys think there's? I mean, I, I, I think for TSU to make this statement, they have made money over the past year, you know, from from 2010 to 2011. That I mean, I, it would it would be nice to see another publisher that become a viable oh, force yeah, because sure. it would just help diversify what's happening out there. And I think people are going to be shocked with Saints Row the Third. I oh think yeah, it's oh, absolutely. Really good. Did you? Yeah, I, think it's I mean, really, the, really, really the new uh, gameplay, the mission that goes through the uh, the plane, the, the mile high. Yeah. Where they're like flying through the plane, he catches he catches the girl uh, as they're diving like towards the earth. The plane is turning around. It's like, oh no, the bad guy is still alive. And he looks at her and he goes, "Remember that feeling that you had when I caught you?" She goes, yeah. And he's like, I want you to hold on to that. And he drops her. And he goes, crashes through the window of the plane, starts shooting everyone else who's left in the plane, drops through the plane again, finds the girl again, lands. That's what I want. That's an open world gameplay right there. And also, they've also hired the greatest thespian, not only of our generation, but possibly of any generation in Sasha Gray. You're to right voice their that. character. Yeah. This is true. I Sasha mean... Gray. She's playing twins, which means we're probably mm -hmm. going to see four Sasha Gray boobies, you no, guys. she's only playing one of the twins. Animated. Yeah, because the other one doesn't talk. Do this, but, you, know you know what I mean? She's, she's not playing both? No, I don't think she's well, playing both. No, no, she's, she's, but she, one of them doesn't talk. Oh, okay. But it's still four <laughs> Sasha Gray boobies if you do the math. And I've done the math quite a few times Man, since I heard about this. Wow. You, yeah. you should teach it to Stephen Johnson yeah, because he, he only likes dumb things. See, the, the trick is to just <laughs> relate so it all to things you like, like boobies. That's five boobies? Yeah, like if, I have, if, if I have six We're... boobies and I take away two boobies, how many boobies do I have left? 37? No, put your hands out like this. Imagine there's six in front of you. Now take away two of the boobies. How many boobies are left in front of your hands? 37. It's close enough, Stephen. Yeah. Stephen Johnson enough. spent a lot of time in room 101. <laughs> <laughs> is that where the boobies right, are? So, so let's talk a little bit. Obviously, we, we were commenting at the beginning that we this is the tail end of the gaming drought. The the man is the goodness just yeah. right, 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 so close. There, so like enough that I want to steal man. stuff off of people's desks we're because the, I'm not reviewing that. Game. We're at that oh. point now, right? Where we for for like a month and a half, we're like, there's nothing to play, and now we're at that point where we're looking at it going. Oh my God! How am I going to have time for all of these? <laughs> right. Like right. We've, we're crossed so over is, into the threshold. Right now is probably not the time that we'd say like, "Hey, go back and play through Oblivion." 
No, you'll right. have a little bit of time to kill. You so have been doing Rob that, was one of the reasons we brought Rob down here because he's good uh, for giving uh, advice. Uh, um, let, let's, let's just briefly go over some of what you think are like kind of the highlight games in the downloadable space that have come out over the summer. Sure. Um, first of all, uh, the summer of arcade. Uh, do we want to go PSN or summer arcade? You just you, you just mix and match. Oh, my let friend. me just mix and match. Go uh, crazy, bro. Just to go off real quickly. Uh, Sony uh, is also doing their own sort of summer arcade. Uh, they have something called Play, PSN Play, where if you order, pre-order games online because those virtual stores can sell out at any time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, they're going to have Street Fighter, thir- uh, Street Fighter Three Third Strike Online Edition. Uh, the next Death Spank, uh, the Baconing, <laughs> which is going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Bloodline uh, Betrayal, which is sort of like a 2D Devil May Cry. It looks amazing. It has a great art style to it. And uh, Ready Game Ops, where you are basically in a small car and blowing everything up. I played that one. A lot of stuff. Now, now, is, 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 is that really the extent of what they're calling play? Or is there going to be more play to play I, there, later there, in the year? There will probably be another play to play. In, in the year if this goes well because there's actually a fifth title if you happen to get all four titles you also get Payday of the Heist for free oh wow. and that's one looks really cool yeah exactly. we actually which we had yeah. on the show or yeah, we're having we had on the demo, show at we some had point we had a hands on demo of it like this it was a game that we heard a little bit about as soon as I got my hands it was like you are in a heist this is Heat the game right you is that are, Val Kilmer in there? yes nice the uh, fat Val one. Kilmer fat. Yeah. but uh, yeah. he can take extra bullets I like that. He's down a little. And so if you pre-order all the games, you get extra content. You get uh, uh, more stuff for it. If you happen to be uh, a plus uh, subscriber, you get 20% off each of the games. I thought you were trying to say if you're plus-sized. Plus-sized. <laughs> you can take more bullets. That'd be everybody, though, right? I mean, so that's, uh, that's uh, PSN Play. But if you're on the Summer Arcade, then you have already been enjoying the sweet nectar that they have but delivered. See, see, but that's the thing. What I like about PSN Play is... Mm-hmm. They didn't make it seasonal. So they're right. kind of like, they can declare playtime in yeah, right, But right. You know, summer of arcade, you're so, kind of like, yeah, ah, you're well, summer. hey, it's the solstice. You get to start, and ooh, it's the uh, equinox. <laughs> you got to You have autumn of arcade. But, but, but to be fair, like, uh, the you winter know, of your <laughs> the winter content. Of your... Microsoft has been doing <laughs> a lot of content? these, like, spring fling and winter and, you know, just after... Don't they all sound like high school dances? They I are. know. You know what? Which means Summer I didn't get invited get... to any of them. Yeah. I'll never play any of these games. Sorry. We can, you can tell the joke and yeah, we can cut it in post. <laughs> It'll just be you saying it. <laughs> <laughs> cut me out completely. We'll fix this in post. What do you like? Guys. What, what, what are your Everything. standouts from Summer of Arcade? Uh, and, and, and let's be fair. Some of these are also available on the PlayStation Network. It's not <laughs> unique to Xbox, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. for, no, no. Uh, most of these. So let's, let's roll, roll down the line. Bastion. Bastion was the first one that it. came out. Absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, uh, sort of this isometric view. Action. It has uh, narration. So as you're walking through, as you're doing things, as you're breaking everything in sight, uh, there's a narrator with a deep voice who just sort of, like, sort of goes through and is you know, it's like, and it's a dynamic narration. A that's dynamic. the part that's yeah. so cool is that you're doing it, and then it's coming up with a story right. to tell. You know? uh, it's beautiful artwork. It has this sort of eastern meets west quality to it. I I actually really sort of dug the the story behind it. Like the the story is, you wake up one day and the world around you is destroyed, and mm. as you walk through the world, it's sort of like coming up to meet you. So you have like the world, like lands, like coming out of nowhere. You have buildings falling into place, like, just like real life. Just I, like I, real I life. have that dream like every other night. <laughs> I just I just been beset with apocalyptic like just nocturnal just sojourns. Really? Really? We were just talking like, about Lovecraft earlier. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Well, that's Maybe more the world destroyed in just like in a, in a quick instant. This is well, more like the slow decay of society. No, but, right. the, but the lead up is that every uh, all the artists start having these very sta- strange dreams right before Cthulhu wakes up. So right. well, I think that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. This You're is what's right. happening. Sorry, everybody. Hey, you know what? You know. At least it's a change of pace. Yeah. <laughs> I welcome it. <laughs> Don't have to worry about seeing any more of those Rick Perry ads. <laughs> Am I going to die? <laughs> good. Well, I got gills now. It's going right, to be good for something. All right, what else you got for us? Uh, that was uh, From Dust. From, from Dust, Dust was, okay. the, was the this next. This seems to be the one that splits the most people. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a sort of arg- organic puzzle title where you are sort of playing God. You don't have control over everything. You're sort of dealing with these limbing like uh, tribesmen, and you're trying to move them from like area to area by pulling up 
ground, like dirt, water, lava, and you're trying to settle it around them. And so instead of black and white, it's like ash and ecru. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's a little more narrow in the mm-hmm. scope than what you can mm-hmm. do. And, I mean, you don't have control over the tribesmen. There, you, you can sort of, like, tell them, like, where to go. You can tell them, like... Oh, Stephen Johnson has gotten so uh, excited yeah, about I, this game. Stephen, mm-hmm. jump in here. I had dozed off for a second. Um, so boring. Yeah. <laughs> what? You're not boring the game. What? The game is... Oh boy. Why is it so boring, Stephen? I Steven? don't know. I, Why? I think that I it was tried, man. I Why? tried to like what, it. How far? Like you can pull up. Oh. Like you can make mountains. You can actually turn the tide of rivers. You can like that's boring. Boring. Let's, let's boring. Say, boring. Stephen, you are a family Lame. man. You are a family <laughs> man. Do you man. do you go camping? Is this just a little bit too close to what? Like I gotta pitch the tent. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I have to. Dig I gotta the lead the my trench. children into this cave. I have to, I have to, to get rid of the lava for the oatmeal. That's what it is. That's that. the thing. If it was I called the Stephen it. Johnson story, that, that'd be so when, I, when I'm not at work, I live in a tribal society, and we have to do all those things and count on our deity. It just brings back memories. <laughs> it's a little too close wanna, to home. It's, it's close to home. But it, I mean, it, it, like it, do, it is more than that. Like you do get into different lands where everything is on fire. You get into a world where like you dig up a little dirt and like it starts like sprouting water everywhere. And so you're basically having to control like the elements at every second. And these guys are. Dumb as mud. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, looks like they kind of like we're made of mud, too. Yeah, that's what I have to say. It's my living room, man. <laughs> that's, that's my kids. <laughs> that's my kids. Um, what are you talking about? Okay, let's, let's, let's go to Insanely Twisted Channel oh, I Planet. I love Insanely Twisted Channel. Okay, I got to give you my... I've, I've told you my Insanely yeah, Twisted know, Channel Planet story. I'm, I'm well. playing it now, but I've just... May, maybe I'm one of those people that games are dumbed down for, but I could have used... Clearer instructions at the beginning. <laughs> you, I happened to start playing it right around the time I came back from a trip to IKEA, which I would also like to point out. I am currently working on a, a way to redo Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, and it's in a f-ing IKEA. <laughs> you can do because that because there's something. I want the idea that in the plant department, someone's gotten a little bit out of control about <laughs> how they're organizing stuff, <sighs> and some guy has to figure it out. Because that is a miserable place. Um, anyway, so they have those, old, and I, I never understand how to construct things. Because it's always pictorial. And it's some sort of universal language that I wasn't part of that universe. And the same thing happened here in Curly Twisted Shadow Planet. It took me, I had to come into work and talk to people, go back home, still get frustrated, come back in again to figure out how to get through the first section. It's, it's, like, got, it's got a it's radar. Like you have like a radar that you now can like I'm, look at stuff now and I'm you can having see. Fun, but <laughs> it took a while. But, but it's, it's got this guy. It's got this. Got this like weapon wheel, and it's got a red thing. I'm like, what does that mean? It means it's most effective against what you're doing. Well, it didn't say that to me. No, oh my god. Is the problem the game, or is the problem Adam Sessler? Mm-hmm. Stephen Johnson. Yes. In all things, yeah. the problem is access. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But it's a, things it's a... I haven't even been to. All but right. It, but you want to know why that Spider-Man musical sucks? Uh, this guy. Sessler. Sessler. <laughs> but it is a beautiful game. It has like a great sort of shadowy look. It has uh, as it's very minimalistic in sort of like the like colors. You have like different places. It is it is an alien world. Where you are, it's Metroid. It's a Metroidvania yeah. style yeah. game, which I don't think a lot of people knew, like going into it. That is like this sort of open world that you unlock as you gain new which weapons, is, which, you know, new which is items. Cool part. Yeah, which is uh, which is a great part. You got these huge bosses that you have to deal with. They're each of them are a little bit different. It's a little bit short, and the multiplayer is not so much fun. But everything else about it. If, you, if you're buying a game like this for the multiplayer, you're not you deserve to be all. disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> and you and your friends have like fun with the lamest things. <laughs> Um, okay, so the the, the next game, I, I gather this is popular, and as, 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 as we've learned, many things are popular. Fruit Ninja, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, Fruit Ninja? Fruit Ninja. stupid. Fruit what? Ninja. Really? Is all you do just slice fruit in half? Slice the fruit? Nice. Yeah, fruit but 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 you're a ninja. I would like to point out and I would, fruit I would, and you're chopping it. Stupid. This didn't start on a console. This no. started on what the iPad or, uh, the, or, the, the, or iPhone. the iPhone. Yeah. Okay. I would like to refer everyone now to my soapbox that I did for this week, where I point out that this whole idea that we shouldn't have any more handheld game systems because of iPhones. This proves my point. Handheld games suck. They're not fun. <laughs> It's just, it's something to do if you're in public and you can't masturbate, but okay? What, what about That's Angry what they're for. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> what why about are you in public I love Angry Birds. Angry I'm saying birds. you're in public, hence you can't, so you have to find something to do with yourself. Oh, I don't want to go in public anymore. 
You're not dumb enough. What about Angry Birds? <laughs> See, but it's not fun. Angry Birds, You're I right. play Angry Birds, but I've never at one point in the course been saying, oh my God, this is fun, like I did when I'm playing just the, like, any, any game on a console. But there's like, uh, like Swords and Sorcery. It's nice. I mean, it's okay, it's, it's, it's but I'm, I'm, I wasn't having fun. Uh, anyway, fun. that's where I put Fruit, fruit Ninja. Connect. Okay, so use your hands. Okay, we're use done. Your Moving on to Toy Soldiers. <laughs> yes, yes, the new uh, Toy Soldiers. This is actually a sequel to the uh, the last, which actually I think was a summer arcade. Two as, years ago? Yeah, about two years was ago. Was it last year? year ago. I think it was last year. Uh, it is. It is now. We are in the Cold War, and it is. It is absolutely fantastic. What they what they've done to this is they've made it fast, kinetic. They let you pilot. Copters, you can actually play as a commando, like Rambo, and just shoot things. Okay. At... Is, 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 is the gameplay, because when I hear Toy Soldiers... Right. You think I that think... amazing Sean Astin movie? No. Okay, yes. wait, was, was, was that it? Yeah. Okay, was the what? Joe Dante movie Small Soldiers? Is that what I'm getting mixed up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Toy Soldiers is the awesome where Will Wheaton runs outside on yeah. the steps yeah, and gets chopped down. Yeah, it's also that great song by Martinez. It's done in the style of a... Like yeah, no, 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 Toy Soldiers. That, that's the yeah. movie that I call Fun Taps, as opposed to Taps. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, man! Wow. We hear Toy Soldiers. I think everyone thinks of the Army Men games. You know, yeah. 3 DOs is, is never-ending line. Is it, it, anything it, like that? No, no, no. It's, okay, it, it's done in the style of a toy box. So everything is small. It looks like it's like Lincoln Logs. It looks like little plastic soldiers. You have like little plastic, but it's still like very much. It is fast. It is connected. Uh, I would compare this to Trenched. Okay. That came out earlier. But I would say that this is even faster and more kinetic than Trench. Okay. Because one of the things that you have to do, uh, in Trench, you only get control like your mech. So you're running around shooting things, and you're sort of like, uh, between uh, waves, you're sort of like building up everything. Here, the whole idea is that you control everything so every little place that you pop down you can jump into and jumping into one of these areas actually rewards you so if you have a machine gunner you can actually jump into the machine gunner and mow people down if you happen to have uh someone who does anti-air you can jump into an anti-air and like start shooting all the planes and you're actually much better than the ai the computer ai and also the whole the new one of the new things with it is that you build up combos. So the more you shoot something down, the faster you do it, you build up this combo. And if you build it up all the way at like 50x, then you get like a super like special like bombing raid. Or you get actually uh, a chopper that flies around the toy box and you shoots down people. As so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that, that, that sounds like a touch of, of, of Call of Duty. Yeah, basically, <laughs> they, they looked at Call of Duty and we, they said, we want to take this and make it into like what we're doing. Okay. And so they've done a lot of that. They have like a lot of different areas. They take a lot of uh, things like Commando, like movies that were made like in the early 80s uh, that deal with the Cold War, and they want to make. Speaking of which, having recently seen Commando, when he starts to blow up some of the buildings at that guy's estate, it, they're kind of like toys because it's just, you, you can see the cardboard yeah. or like the plywood that's that thin, so like you get the big explosion. Um, cool. I, you know, I was not going to check this game out. And I, you, your enthusiasm. I, I would say it's it. not out yet, but it is coming out, I believe, this week. Yeah. I, I might even be today, actually. Might even be today. Oh, God. Well, you know what? If I, if I, if I play for one reason, I'm going to play for Sean Astin. That's right. That's you right. Know, we, we, we and, you know, skinny Sean Astin. Not I made a lot of money in Lord of the Rings and I'm fat Astin. now. Yeah. Rudy Sean Astin. All right. You know so I, mean? I, I, I think there should be enough to bide the time. Um, really, I think even for us, you know, the drought, it's, 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 it's over in a handful of days um, because we're yeah. going to have people in here next week who are currently in the, um, the land of Germany. Oh. Yes, Deutschland is what I hear they call it. Whoa. Um, even though Whoa. I thought that they were in Holland. Yeah. Um, they're going to come back see, with the sausage there. Right. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're going to come back. Obviously, they're going to be seeing a lot of the games that we're going to be talking about for the next week. Um, hopefully, they're having fun. I mean, I, I, I heard today that even the German economy is fully stagnated. So, I mean, I, 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 bet, <laughs> I, I, I bet it should be a good time over there on what they call the continent. The, the <laughs> continent. That's where they have the breakfast of the coffee and the pastry, oh. as if that actually constitutes awesome. a breakfast. Right. Yeah. Anyway, well, you're probably tales like that and all that stuff on next week's feedback, but I would like to thank Blair, Stephen, Rob Ooh, for coming yeah. downstairs and doing this with me. Yeah. Of course, we'll be doing it next week, the week following, and probably until the time that Great Cthulhu rises from the depths of the ocean, which may be sooner than we think. Oh, yeah. Best way to find out is by watching on a weekly basis to hear what I dreamt about. Remember, feedback going up on G4TV.com every Wednesday. Thank you so much, and, you know, stay safe. Woo.
Hello there, I'm Adam Sessler, host of X-Play, editor-in-chief at G4TV.com. I talk a lot about video games, and sometimes a camera is in front of me when I'm doing that. We call that Sessler's Soapbox. It takes about two minutes of your time, but trust me, you will hear invective and joy, and probably a lot of rude things like you've never heard before in the context of video games. I do it for you, so you should check it out. It's up every Tuesday on G4TV.com.